I am Merida, firstborn descendant of Clan Dumbroch. And I'll be shooting for my own hand. What are you doing? Her voice isn't too far removed from mine. I just sort of amped up the teenage thing that's never quite left. <laughs> I just had to pretend my mum was in the room. You never really grow out of that in a way. You know, there is nothing that can wind you up like your parents. Merida's relationship with her mother is inspired by my daughter Emma's relationship with me. <laughs> we just don't see eye to eye ever, and we fight like cats and dogs. And she does have this incredibly passionate nature that, to me, is Merida. The way that I would try to get into Merida is through her skill, was something that she loved very much. Wow. <laughs> She's going to be a strong chick, won't she? So we did take archery class, and it was really enlightening just to, you know, how do you get good at this? Focus and flick. Everyone let's go. Shoot me. I really wanted Merida's design to be unique. I wanted her to be solid. I wanted her to be an athlete. I wanted her to be like a gymnast, you know, with big, strong legs. You know, they're all muscle under there. Every artist interprets it in their own way. Purcell will do drawings, I'll do drawings, Brenda did drawings, but the spirit of the character always kind of remained. She's a little more feral looking in a good way, in a way that I like her ears a little bigger, and, and her face kind of comes out in the front in a cool way, and her hair is always messed up. That was always a character point that Brenda wanted to have. We want it to be in her face, and we want it to be flying around. We don't want it to look combed. We don't want it to look like she's a princess. We want her to, we want her to look like, you know, her own person. When we started, we had our original hair simulator, and that was not capable of doing curly hair simulations. It was bouncing way too much. Hair with that kind of volume and curls, that's a very tricky simulation problem. Oh. Let's dive in. Welcome to right. Character Sim Review. There was this one point when we hit a wall with Meredith's hair where we were like, this is not gonna work. And it got to a point where it was like, well, maybe Meredith needs to have a haircut. And everyone in the room just was like, what? Like, how can you say that? It would have been a disaster if we had to cut her hair. It is the visual representation of her wild, unruly, free spirit. It was a great challenge for the crew, and I'm glad they hung in there and really worked out all the kinks of how to get that to look as good as it does. They click this, and then they can, you know. I'm going to show you the, the actual rig right. that we put together for animators. It's really one of the hardest animation problems we solved here. Without that hair and without all the new technology and tools that enabled us to do that hair, you have a very different character and a very different relationship with her mother. Oh, Merida! <laughs> Merida! Queen Eleanor is a working mom. She is not this quiet little wife sitting next to her husband. She is the diplomat. She's the one who basically calls the shots. It's kind of an annoying full-time gig, and you can see that she's made sacrifices. Eleanor's a really interesting character, I think, because she's the peacemaker. She's a lot of the uh, brains behind the operation. She's a queen, and she was born into it, so she's been brought up. But you know that way back, she was quite feisty. Her hair is perfectly braided, and then her dress is beautiful. But it feels somewhat a little heavy. She's holding the burden of the kingdom on her shoulders. We were painting these little gold leaf designs on it, which made for a really beautiful, rich feel for Eleanor. She's contained. Her dress is fitted, her hair is pulled back. She doesn't gesture, she holds it in tight. Whereas Merida is just all over the place. I wanted Merida to have a dress where she could just do her archery and gesture when she's angry and, you know, shovel the horse stuff and, and just do what she needs to do. The intent of Meredith's dress, her hero dress that she wears uh, throughout most of the film, is that she designed it herself. Where it's, it's tight here, but there's loose cloth for movement for her elbows, and it's a historic design. Give us a turn. <laughs> oh, I can't move. 
I worked on a sequence where Eleanor puts a dress on Merida, and Merida is totally not liking it. She's wearing a corset underneath. She's restricted. It physically changes the shape of her body. So it's someone physically trying to force her to be someone else. When I was trying to figure out the acting in these shots, I used my personal experiences with my own mother and the arguments and the struggle we go through. The most important thing for me is to show how Eleanor really wants to speak to her daughter. She really wants to tell her, it's gonna be okay, you might hate this now, but you're gonna thank me later. But she just can't find the words. Just... Remember to smile. I think the dress symbolizes her being an adult. Merida rebels, runs away from her problems. The dress gets more and more torn up and gets dirt on it and just starts to fall apart. And it's, it's her state of mind. She's so upset, she doesn't know what to do with herself. And that's how she can get to a state where she asks a witch to put a spell on her own mom. There's massive consequences to what she does. Merida realizes, oh my God, I've done this to my mother. I was so wrong to be this selfish. I really need my mom in my life because she is a source of my, my strength. I think for me, the most amazing moment is when they work together and Merida gets to grow up, but it's through a collaboration with her mother. I decided to do what's right. And they have to learn to listen to each other. So when mom can't speak anymore, that's when Merida realizes she has to pay attention. And then when Merida is out there trying to save mom's life, that's when mom realizes she has to pay attention. What I love about the film is how her vulnerability starts to come through when she's transformed. The bear, if you're looking at the bear as a sort of archetype which represents a human emotion, it's this rage. There's part of me was playing it as though Eleanor was almost released by becoming a bear. Because she's, she's like anybody else. There's, there's rage and anger in her too. In the story, it turns out to be the kind of scary creature ends up to be like the ultimate protector of her daughter. So in the final moments of the movie, we see mom, she's willing to give her life for her daughter like any mom would, but in this case, it's personified by an a enormous black bear. I think Merida realizes the shocking fact that she's just like her mom. What's not to like about Merida? She's not brave at first. She's headstrong at first, and she's wild, and she's fierce, and she's passionate, but she's not brave till the end. You have to be afraid of losing something to be brave. Merida has a lot of what my daughter, Emma, has, which is this fire for life. As time goes on, I realize this amazing thing about my daughter, and Eleanor sees that in Merida, that she's gonna make this amazing queen one day. I can write a happy ending for Merida and Mom, and I'm sure we'll have one too. <laughs>